Hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore Your Pain Away. Bore your pain away. Welcome. And please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and also only listen or watch this video when you, when you know the cause of your chronic pain. Okay. So this is the third, third recording, third video in this series. And I've created a new podcast around this. So you can check that out if you want to. It's on Spotify, um, Apple Music or Apple Podcasts. Um, it's on a list of different places on my website. Well, not yet, but it will be. So it's basically, let me bore your pain away. Pain away in capital letters. So what I thought I'd do is... Before we go any further, I want to show you some of my pain relief books. Oh, yes. Or my hypnosis pain books. Now, I've got lots of books that uh, have the subject of chronic pain in them. Lots and lots and lots. Uh, especially to do with, you know, hypnosis and stuff. Scripts and ideas and, you know, things like that. Metaphors. So, but these are some books that I only about chronic pain. So I thought I'd just show them to you, share them with you, let you see them. Uh, I've also got another one over there, but it's over there and I can't get to it because it's too far away. Where's that one that I got recently? I don't know. Anyway, this one, you can see that. Hypnotize yourself out of pain now. So that's that one. I'm just going to show them to you just, just because I can. Something to do. Hypnosis for chronic pain management. That's by, it's a therapist guide. That's by Mark P. Jensen. The other book's by Bruce N. Imer. So he's someone that I've actually been following on YouTube for, and, um, for quite a few years. And, uh, yeah, I'm quite interested to see what he's got to say. I love this stuff, honestly. Uh, you got hypnosis suggestion for the treatment of pain. This is Joseph Barber. There's the neuroscience of chronic pain relief. This is a devo devout director. David Derega. You've got Hypnosis for Chronic Pain Management. There you go. Workbook as Mark Pay Jensen. Acute and Procedural Pain Management. So this is Favorite Methods of Master Clinicians. Hypnosis for, this is, there you go. This is Hypnosis for Acute and pro, pro, a hypnosis for acute and procedural pain management. Then you've got pediatric pain relief. Uh, help your child feel better with mindful hypnosis. Hypnosis for children with IBS and tummy ache. And that's Robert Hughes. The other one was Kelly T. Woods. Hypnotherapy of pain in children with cancer. This is Josephine R. Hilgard, Samuel Lib Baron. This, I got this recently actually. Pain control with hypnosis. Kelly T. Woods. So that's interesting. I haven't gone and bought the same book twice, have I? Kelly T. Woods, pediatric pain relief. It's got to be the same person, isn't it? Help your child feel better with mindful hypnosis. The ultimate, and this one is pain control with hypnosis, ultimate practitioner's guide. So that's two by the same person. And that's a recent book. Advances in the use of hypnosis for medicine, dentistry, and pain revention, prevention, management. Is that one? 
that's Donald C. Brown. Hypnosis in Medicine and Surgery. Mesmerism in India. This is an old book. James Esdal. It's a very, very famous book, that. Uh, this isn't even open. Clinical Hypnosis for Pain Control. And that's from David R. Patterson. And lastly, Imagery for Pain Relief. A scientifically grounded guidebook for clinicians, David Pincus and Anise A. Sheik. So there's, they're my specific for pain relief books. But I do have other books that, I've got another one over there as well. So there's, a, there's one. So one, two, how many are there? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's only fifteen, but it's, I don't know. I quite like it. I quite like them. I do. A lot. I'm sure I have others. There's others. I've got others on pain relief, but these are the, the main ones. And, the reason I'm showing you these partly is just to let you know that this is the kind of stuff that I'm interested in. This is the kind of thing that stimulates my brain, my big old brain or my tiny little brain, whichever way you look at it. Just have a look, see if I can find any other pain relief books. I'm sure there is, you know. I'm sure there is somewhere. Hypnosis for children. Therapeutic hypnosis. Changing children's lives of hypnosis. Integral process. Clinical hypnosis for children. Effective metaphors of children. Uh, okay. There's a few. Lots of books that have got um, hypnosis for pain relief. I've got a lot of books like that. And the reason I'm telling you this is basically because I've been absorbing this stuff uh, for over 20 years. I've been absorbing uh, techniques and ideas and uh, philosophies and... you know, creative, maybe fantasies even, but creative thinking towards how to change the concept or our perception of the way we physically feel. We can change the way we emotionally feel and we can change the way we physically feel. Uh, I'll give an example of that is if... So I'm, I'm now distracted by looking for more pain relief books. Okay, let it go. So, if someone knocked on your door and said, I need your help, quickly, and their car was on fire. Not an emergency, there's no one in the car, but it's, you know, like, the car's on fire, can you help me? I don't know what to do. Um... Do we need to get a fire department out probably? But I, my phone's in the car, so I left my phone in the car. The f is, I've walked out of the car and it's set on fire eh, for whatever reason. So you go outside your house, you, you know, you're safe distance away from the car. You don't, don't, you know, do anything like that, but guaranteed instantly, instantly, whatever you were feeling before, Whatever you were thinking about, whatever you were physically feeling or emotionally feeling, gone. Instantly gone. So you might have been lying or sitting down in a chair, uh, feeling sorry for yourself, which is one of my favorite things to do sometimes, and focusing on what you don't have, focusing on uh, lack. You're focusing on the physical discomfort. The doorbell goes. 
you go to the door, you might hobble to the door because your foot hurts. And then when you step outside and see this car on fire, your foot stops hurting. You don't even notice your foot. All you're focused on is external stuff. You're focused just on what's going on. Uh, I guess the first thing you're worried about is, is there anyone else in the car? There isn't. So at least you can start to relax, you know, when you know that. So it's more of a, uh, a practical issue, you know, making sure no one else goes near the, near the car, but it's unlikely anyone's going to go near a car that's on fire. Call it the fire brigade and get them in there and just wait for them to arrive. Make sure your neighbor, because if it's your neighbor's car, maybe it's a winter day, a winter evening, uh, they might not have their keys to get into their home. So maybe you need to invite them in or give them a coat or a blanket to put over them. So you're focused externally. This external focus I've noticed helps. Not in such a extreme way, because that is quite an extreme example. There's worse examples, and I don't really want to go down that road. But it's it's an extreme thing. But what I've noticed in my life is when I focus on other people, not in a gossipy way, not in a judgmental way, focusing on how they look. Oh, they look, yeah, look at what they're, look at what they're wearing. Me, 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 you know, nothing like that. Focus on helping other people. Now, I'm no saint. I don't always help people. I, you know, I'm not perfect at all. I don't want to be. I'd like to be better, but I don't want to be perfect because that's an unobtainable thing. But focusing on helping other people, even if it's not personally helping people, like one-on-one, if you can do it, however you do it, it takes you out of yourself. It takes you away from that constant internal light shining upon your own what you might call suffering, discomfort, pain, emotional, physical, whatever it might be, stress, tension. If that constant focusing and having those floodlights like a football pitch shining inward upon you and your, you know, the whole grass is you, you know, the grass of the football pitch, it's you. There's nowhere to hide, is it? It's like really, it's like too much. A bit too much. But when you start shining those lights and turning them around to shine outside of the football pitch, it takes the pressure. It takes the light away from the football pitch. And eventually, the more lights turned around, eventually the football pitch becomes nice and quiet. Uh, and I want to say quiet. I mean from a a light perspective. There's something quite busy sometimes. Something quite can feel quite loud about bright lights. Uh, I remember years ago I used to go on stage and having that bright light right shining right in my face. Uh, It wasn't always the most comfortable thing. And and I performed in a theatre. It was the Hackney Theatre. Back in 2003, I think it was. And brilliant experience. It's just like an open, it was a con, it was a contest thing that I went to and a huge stage. Never been on a big stage like that before, but the lights so bright. Honestly, I was worried my makeup was going to melt. But it was all right. It was, it was, but there's nowhere to hide. You can be seen everywhere because the lights, it wasn't just one spotlight. It was like everywhere. So when you get rid of those spotlights on yourself, 
internal spotlights, you can relax a bit. You know, I mean, it's, you can fall asleep with lights, but it's, it's a little bit easier when it's dark. We have the choice. Because if you're in your bedroom, you have a choice. At night, you can have the light on if you want, or you can turn the light off and sleep in darkness. Or you can have a light on in the hallway or in the bathroom, leave the door open, and you've got the light from the bathroom. So you've got a bit of both. So, you know, if you want darkness, you face towards the wall, you know, on your on your side. If you want a bit of, a bit of light, you maybe face the other way on your side. And you, you know, so... It's all about choices. And you might be thinking, what's this got to do with chronic pain? What's this got to do with pain relief? Uh, well, this could be part of the boring, <laughs> the boring bit. So here's the deal. Here's the deal of these recordings, these videos, these recordings, podcasts is if you feel better. And I don't mean better as in healed. I mean, if you feel better at the end of the recording than you did before you started listening, if you feel more relaxed, if you feel more relaxed emotionally, more relaxed physically, if you feel that the uh, physical discomfort has reduced, then you'll know that it's worked and this is something that may be useful to you. I mean, I know I'm not really selling it. It's not a big sell, um, but I'm just being honest. It's if this is something that is useful, then brilliant. You know, just see how you get on. Because I would suggest before you even start to listen, and I know we're kind of, what, 15 minutes in, before you start to listen, maybe get a, a write down 0 to 10 what scale you are on the discomfort feeling. You know, so if you're feeling like a 0 being no feeling at all, you're absolutely fine. 10 being the worst possible level of it, you know, just write down whatever number you feel you are then. And then when you finish the recording, when you finish listening, uh, if you choose to, if you haven't fallen asleep through boredom, or if you haven't relaxed so deeply that you just don't care, you know, like you'd, when you open your eyes, you open your eyes and you're, you're happy and you're feeling, uh, reju rejuvenated, you feel replenished, you feel, uh, the muscles in your bodies are completely relaxed and almost that you just let go of everything. So you might not remember to go back to your pad and, or to your memory of what number it was before and what number it is now. After you've relaxed deeply and calmly and let go of all that negativity naturally. And I remember going all the way back to two years, 19, I was at my cousin's house in about 1999, maybe 2000. And he had a computer with a recording equipment, recording software, audio recording software. So I recorded, I made a little recording. It was cheeky. It was, it, it was a start of a relaxation session. You are feeling relaxed. But then it was, then I turned it into like a silly jokey thing. And that was the first time I ever recorded my own voice. Okay. It's not true. I, I used to record my voice when I was younger. But that was the first time as a, okay, uh, from a hypnosis perspective, from a uh, relaxation 
you know, thing. I'd never done anything like that before. I had recorded my gigs that I did uh, back in the early 90s, 91 to 98. I used to record my gigs I did. Um, not all of them, but I recorded quite a few just so I could hear them back and, you know, get an idea how well I did. And, um, so I knew how I sounded kind of. And then, you know, when I was, I, I made some, recorded some songs in the middle nineties, just with my, with my family, with my, with my uncle, recorded some songs. And then, but that was just, just for fun, really. When I was a kid, I used to record songs. Like I used to write songs. I used to have a lot of cassettes and tape them. And in 1990, yeah, 1990, I used to try and put together some tape recordings, try and, uh, put together an act, some kind of comedy act. Oh, it was awful, very, very bad. However, I, you know, so I played around with tape recorders and listening to myself. Ever since the age of, I don't know, I don't know, 10, 9, 10. So it's not been solid the whole time. I mean, it's been solid the last 16, 17 years, but this is for a purpose. But I remember thinking when I first did that I thought to myself this is going back you know 2000 when I was on my cousin's computer talking to his microphone he had a good microphone and I thought I wonder if I could do a recording every day like a regular recording that would encompass everything that would be uh, useful for everybody, regardless what their condition, issue, uh, reason for listening was, regardless of what they needed help with, what the problem was, or however you want to word it, that they could listen to that one recording, but then, you know, a regular version of that recording, and it would cover everything. It would cover uh, insomnia, pain issues, smoking, weight loss, all, all the different things, as well as all the emotional issues and, you know, uh, phobias and, you know, habit issues. Just one, reco one recording. And I'm still looking for that magic that magic solution, that magic um, potion uh, where one recording would cover everything. And I still not found it. But what I have found is a foundation, a kind of format. And these boring recordings is a format certain format that is potentially useful and not for everything all in one place unfortunately and wouldn't that be lovely but useful in a way that can help you feel different And even though you're listening to me and I might be talking about stuff that you've got no interest in in hearing, your body relaxes, your mind slows down. You feel different. You feel calmer. Your muscles those muscles where there's tightness start to just unravel that tightness.
And if there's a part of your body, which there probably would be if you're listening to this, a part of your body where you would prefer to have more, more comfort, more relaxation aimed at that part. Then that can happen. In fact, now that you've focused on that part of your body, those feelings of comfort, those feelings of relaxation, peace, healing, change, naturally start to move into that part of your body because that's what you've just been focusing on. And you literally don't have to do anything. You can just observe how you start to notice subtle changes in that part of your body. Sometimes it can feel almost like a jigsaw puzzle and you've got that picture of that part of your body and you decide to take some of those pieces out and chuck them into the empty box. Just random pieces from that part of your body. The picture of that part of your body is on the box of the jigsaw puzzle. And you're just taking random pieces out and just chucking them into the box. And each time you do that, that part of your body feels different. Every time you do that, take another piece of that jigsaw puzzle, removing it from that part of your body causes significant changes physically and emotionally. To become more aware and more obvious of increased comfort and a sense in that part of your body that may feel a bit strange, a bit, not in a bad way, just a bit strange, a bit different. And I guess in some ways with those parts missing temporarily, it's an incomplete part. But at the same time, you can only feel the parts that are there. So the more parts you take off, the less you can feel of whatever that feeling was before. You decided to listen to my voice and allow my boring voice to guide you through whatever this is. Moving forward. And when you think about the future, uh, not just tomorrow or the next week or the next month or next year, but in five minutes time, the future, how do you expect that part of your body to feel? How relaxed do you expect that part of your body to feel? Be honest. Do you expect it to feel more relaxed? Maybe you expect it to feel roughly the same, maybe a little bit less tense than before. Maybe you expect it to be really comfortable. Almost as if all those feelings of 
tension and stress just drop to the ground, dissolving into the earth. So those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that are in that box, what you can now do is look at that box because you know you've got you can see the pieces in there, and you can just imagine pouring some liquid into that box, covering all of those pieces that are in there. And this liquid is healing liquid. Healing energy. Deep relaxation and healing. And you could just watch as that liquid, it could be any color. Maybe it's blue, maybe it's yellow, maybe it's multicolored. And it soaks into those individual pieces of jigsaw that's in that box at the moment and whatever color it was before maybe it soaks deep in so you can't even see that color anymore maybe you can maybe seeing that color reminds you of that healing process that will continue And now that those pieces of that jigsaw puzzle are now dry, ready to be returned to that part of your body. And you can start putting those pieces back into that part of your body where they came from. And you can do that now. One by one. And as you do that, notice how they just seem to slot in so easy, almost like a magnet is drawing them in. So you don't even need to touch them because they're just sucked in to position naturally. And you notice as they enter back into that part of your body, the instant feeling of that healing energy starting to connect and spread and sink deep, deep into that part of your body, into the muscles, the skin, the bone, wherever that part of the body is, it sinks deep inside and spreads across as well as deep in. And you can observe the feeling of that healing energy sinking and spreading deeply far and wide, deep, 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 affecting every nerve positively, every particle of skin healing. You may almost feel like a light vibration, a coolness, spreading over that part of your body. Maybe you notice that coolness across your face, maybe on your hands, letting you know that everything is at work, helping you, healing you, allowing you to Think positively about yourself, expecting to feel good, expecting to feel relaxed, 
expecting tomorrow to be better than today and each day better than the day before. Expecting that in five minutes time you feel so relaxed so peaceful and calm in five minutes time you may be surprised just how easily you have made these changes your own, your mind, calm and slow, the rest of your body continuing to relax deeply in its own time, breathing so easily, Enjoying those sensations of peace. Enjoying feeling so incredibly calm. So very calm. Loose. Peaceful. So peaceful. Enjoying all of these changes knowing that from now on you will experience more and more comfort and deep relaxation not just in that part of your body but everywhere relaxed Deeply, so very relaxed, so, so calm, peace. So light. Mm. 